Presented by the all-new Civic, the 2016 North American Car of the Year. A beautiful day here in the great city of Toronto. Game three of this three-game set as the Toronto Blue Jays try to salvage this three-game series. The Mariners have taken the first two. Friday night it was a 2-1 score and then yesterday Scott Service's team pounded out 14 runs as they won 14 to 5. Here is the Hall of Fame Sunday lineup for Scott Service. Aoki Nori Aoki hitting 254 now because of this series he's 5 for 11 with two RBIs and three runs scored and how about the day yesterday for Nelson Cruz Cruz you see his career numbers against half eight for 15 yesterday seven RBIs for Nelson Cruz. Pretty tough lineup it's been for the Blue Jays to deal with in this series. Jay Happ is looking to set a new career high in wins matching his high of 12 victories in the first half of the season. Thought he had it in his last start pitched well enough to win in that last start but he left after he was hit with a line drive and the bullpen coughed up the lead when Jay left he had to settle for a no decision. This is his first start against his former team since they traded by the Blue Jays to Seattle last season uh, would be his fourth career start versus Seattle first one since 2014 traded for Michael Saunders 26 degrees and partly cloudy very comfortable 26 degrees after the last couple of days Aoki Ionetta and Cano the three batters that Hap will face and the first pitch misses and a count of one and oh Tim Timmons calls the balls and strikes. And that pitch misses low and the count now two and oh Jay is going to live down there and if he does stay down there today he's going to be OK. It'll be interesting to see how he comes back after getting hit by that line drive in his last start at Oakland. Hit foul and the count two and one. Aoki came into this series hitting 245 now hitting 254. As you mentioned the bottom of the fifth inning in Oakland Jake Smolenski hit a line drive off of the left forearm of Jay Happ. He Jay, continued to pitch. Yeah he had that bullseye on his back that day in the air to left field and Saunders is there. There's one away here in the top of the first inning. Well we are talking about it here it is Smolinski right back off of Jay you can tell when you see him running around like that you could tell he was really hurt. He did not uh, have a fracture or anything like that but he was trying to walk that thing off and that was stinging. We saw him after the game and talked to him and said that was one of the best that he's gotten on his arm. He also got hit another time and there was also another line drive that just missed him so John Gibbons got him out of there after he finished that inning. He was cruising along against Oakland. He retired the first nine batters in his last outing. Here's Chris Ionetta, the DH today. And then that line drive off of the left forearm started to change things in that sixth inning. He gave up a home run to Marcus Simeon. And then Chris Davis with a walk and. And that was the end of his yeah. outing as Jesse Chavez came in. Pitched well enough to win that game. Yep. He was on fire. Everything was down. Everything was on the corner. He had a tight break on that cutter. Just 84 pitches. Got him on the inside corner. And the defense behind Jay Happ here on this Sunday. Saunders Pilar in center and Carrera in right field. Darwin Varney will get the start his 13th at third base. Troy Tulowitzki on the right side. It's Devin Travis and Edwin Encarnacion. And before this year Darwin Varney the last time he played third base was 2010 but he's done a heck of a job this year filling in for Josh Donaldson to let him DH. Cano fouls this one off. 
three straight starts for Josh Tolley behind the plate. Here's Darwin Barney. He has played in now 17 games at third. He's played left field. He's played short second. He's pitched. pitched 34 chances at third base. He hasn't committed an error yet this this season. And because of the injury to Russell Martin, he also now owns catcher's equipment. Mm -hmm. He'll be the backup today. Cano hitting 305 on the road this season. Tabby hitting 338. Is Robinson Cano? He made a play in yesterday's ball game that was spectacular up the middle. I mean, that's vintage Robinson Cano, great fielder and an outstanding hitter. Half deals and a hard hit ground ball to the right side. That's handled by Devin Travis. It's a one-two-three top of the first inning. That hasn't been easy to do for the pitchers of the Jays against the Mariners. John Gibbons has this lineup with Darwin Barney leading off for the Toronto Blue Jays. They've dropped the first two in this series. They have the Padres coming to town tomorrow and then the Baltimore Orioles. The DH today is Josh Donaldson over the last 16 games hitting 410 extra base hits and 17 runs driven in his production this year better than his American League MVP season from a year ago Troy Tulowitzki against Wade Miley six for 16 with three extra base hits and the first pitch to Barney misses here is a left hander Wade Miley 18 start of the season for Miley he was acquired by Seattle from the Boston Red Sox last December for Carson Smith and Rowanis Elias, six and seven with an inflated 536 earned run average. This is his fifth career start versus the Blue Jays. And those four previous starts, he hasn't fared much better. An ERA approaching seven versus the Blue Jays. He has really struggled. The last time he won a ball game, as Barney fouls that off to the right side, it was back on June seventh. Since that time, he's lost. Five consecutive starts, and he's also had a stint on the DL, 15 day DL, from June 17th through June 29th. It has been a rough go for the left hander. It's been a team streak type of yeah. thing for him. He's been a very streaky pitcher for Seattle. He won at one time this year, five decisions in a row. That was from April the 24th yeah. through May the 22nd. And like you said, he's lost his last five starts this season. Barney stays alive on June 7th after a win against Cleveland Miley was six and two but since that time this has been the issue right here look at the opponents batting average 312 Houston Kansas City the White Sox Pittsburgh and Texas have all lit them up 0 and 4 since returning from the DL Sardinius playing shortstop today. And he makes a play on that ground ball and there's one away here in the bottom of 
hitting number one behind the lefty Miley. Aoki, Martin, and Cruz in right field taking over for Seth Smith. Seeger, former Gold Glover at third. Luis Sardinas at short. Robinson Cano and Deho Lee playing at first base in a platoon with Adam Lynn. And there's the third baseman just a couple of years ago. Kyle Seeger won that gold glove for Seattle. He's an Iron Man. He has played in 776 of the last 800 games for Seattle, dating back to 2011. Just pencil his name in the lineup every single day and let him go do his thing. Seeger, the North Carolina product, he's committed 12 errors this season. Time called by Josh Donaldson. Offensively speaking, the 28-year-old third baseman Kyle Seeger is having a better year. This year statistically as Donaldson drives this one deep to center field and going back on the track Martin the wind is blowing left to right and maybe that one got hung up in that wind and that's a second out here in the bottom of inning number one he hit it but he hit it to the deepest part of the ballpark there's the wind just swirling a little bit today. Miley you saw in those last few stats he's been giving up the home run. A couple of them in his last start versus the White Sox. He's given up 17 this season. But Seager offensively on track to have a better year than he did when he was an all star in 2014. Edwin looks at a strike and quickly 0 and 2 to Encarnacion 26 home runs and 86 runs driven in. The most in the bigs. Wade Miley and the Mariners, they've won three in a row. And for their last five, they're three games above 500. Edwin puts a charge into this one, but it is right there for Martin. And it's a one, two, three, bottom of inning number one. We head now to the second. Mike Plar and brother Michael Plar. Now, let's begin with you, Mike. You had a chance to throw at the first pitch along with your son between that and the bobblehead. What has this day been like for you? So far, fantastic. I mean, dream come true. And it also helped having my son out there with me. Took a lot of pressure off. Well, Michael, Kevin often credits you for his toughness, saying that, you know, his brother beat up on him a lot growing up. What, what was that like growing up with Kevin? Uh, I'm just glad to have uh, my brother that was close enough in age with me that we could um, compete against each other and push each other. Um, as much as I, I may have been rough with him, he also pushed me to be better because he was always right on my tail, you know. And uh, it's just cool having someone uh, to be close with. Well, listen, guys, both of you, I know it's been a great honor for both of you. Enjoy the day, and hopefully Kevin comes through with something big today, okay? Hey, let's just get a win today. That's all I want. All right, there is Mike and Michael Pilar. Let's send it back to you, Matt. All right, great moment for the Pilar family. Certainly proud here on this Sunday. Kevin Pilar bobblehead day, and then throwing out the first pitch, and Kevin Pilar was the catcher for the ceremonial first pitches of the game. Hap deals in the first pitch to Nelson Cruz is low, but what a great story of perseverance. Kevin Pilar, 32nd round draft choice from West Hills, California. Played Division II collegiately. 
Hey, if you can play, they'll find you. Absolutely. You know, you don't have to go to all those showcases and all that kind of stuff. If you're good, the scouts will find you. And then once you get into the system, take advantage yeah. of it. And he did. Yep. You know, you talked to some of the coaches who were in the minor league system for the Blue Jays at that time. They always said he was the best player on their teams. Even though he was that late round draft pick, he was always the best player. Cal State Dominguez Hills in Carson, California. And Cruz walks. Here it is, the ceremonial first pitch. There's Mike. He throws a strike and a little pressure out of Michael. And he paints the outside corner and a great moment there for the Pilar family. And now it's time to go to work. Yep. <laughs> and as Mr. Pilar said, time to get a win. And the pitch to Deho Lee is in there for a strike. Nelson Cruz, not a bad option to put him at first base. He was a one man wrecking crew yesterday, and he's had a tremendous amount of success against Hap. Yeah, eight for 15 against Jay. So. You walk him, you put him over there first base, you know exactly where he is. Right? <laughs> You're not going to lose track of yeah, him. Yeah, there he is. Now you can throw a double play ball. Hit a grand slam yesterday in the top of the third. Hit a three run home run in the eighth. Tough day at the office yesterday for the Blue Jays. They lost 14 5. Day Ho Lee with a line drive into left. And there's one away here in the top of the second. That's going to bring up the third baseman, Kyle Seeger. Talked about his 2014 All Star campaign when he hit 268, 25 home runs, 96 RBIs. This season, Seeger hitting 284, 19 homers, and 65 RBIs. He's tied with Nelson Cruz, 14 best. If he hits another home run, and I hope he does it after yes. they're done playing the Blue Jays, that will give him five straight seasons. Of 20 home runs, he'd be just the sixth Mariner player with five seasons or more, not necessarily consecutive, of at least 20 home runs. And it's a who's who, really, for the Seattle Mariners' history. Of course, Ken Griffey Jr., he did it nine times, Edgar Martinez, eight times, Jay Buhner, Raul Abana, and of course, Alex Rodriguez did it five seasons. Jr. going into the Hall of Fame today, along with Mike Piazza. Ken Griffey Jr. as a Mariner, the first, and Mike Piazza as a member of the New York Mets. He's the second to go into the Hall of Fame as a member of the Mets, the other being the great Tom Seaver. You know, Ken Griffey Jr. got the highest percentage of votes yeah. ever. And that's just how popular yeah. he is or was. He was named on 437 of 440 ballots. 99.3 percent of the Hall of Fame voters put him on the ballot. Most in history, as you mentioned. Six all-time in home runs, 630. Hap checks over at first, and a ground ball. Out at second, on to first, got him. Double play, that ends the top of the second inning. Coming up, Saunders to Lewitsky. Pilar. Let's go to the second.
home runs. Well, the 19 home runs has tied his career high in home runs. Let's take a look at the career high in all of his other numbers. Now in his eighth big league season, 273, 125, 19 home runs, 57 RBIs. Those were done in his career year, except for the batting average in 2012. Well, the kind of year that he has had, look at the projections for Michael. 31 home runs on pace for that and 76 driven in a 288 batting average for him. That's why I'm voting him right now the comeback player of the year in the American League. There are some other deserving candidates, I think, and we named them in the opening. Chris Tillman, Mark Trumbull, even Marcus Stroman, who only had four starts last year. But Michael Saunders last year only got into nine games, had 31 at bats, six hits, no extra base hits. He has blown past all of that so far this year. Has three home runs in this series, had two yesterday, and one on Friday night. And he'll begin things here in the bottom of the second. And Wade Miley deals. Saunders last season, as you mentioned, nine games. He had nine games in Dunedin during his rehab. Hit 233 there, hit 194 with the Blue Jays. Had surgery late last February to remove part of the meniscus in his left knee. And he has just made a tremendous comeback and so great to see an all star. And you ask him, you say, hey, you know, what's the difference between last year and this year? And he says, I'm healthy. Yeah. Finally got my legs underneath me. Check swing. That home run that he hit yesterday was his eighth against left handed pitching. That tied for third most against left handed pitching in club history for one season. Carlos Delgado holds the record with 12 home runs versus left handed pitchers. Did he go around? He did. A very patient hitter is Saunders. A little bit more aggressive this season, and John Gibbons thinks that has helped him. Home hardware and building center locations. Proud partners of the Toronto Blue Jays. Homeowners helping homeowners with expert advice. Great Sunday here at the ballpark as Tulowitzki drives this one into center field and it's a one out single for Tulo. Now that's what I love to see from. Troy lately he's been very aggressive first pitch swinging. Hey this might be the best pitch that you see in the at bat. Looks like a cutter out over the plate and Tulo jumps all over. Solid single that's the game's first hit. He's got a nine game hit streak now. Blue Jays since the all star break are three and four. Checking in over at first base on Tulowitzki. Going into the break, they had one eight of nine playing great baseball. Talk to John Gibbons about, you know, sometimes you don't want to see that break. But the break did happen, and then they lost their first two in Oakland, and you thought that everything started to settle in and get back to form against Oakland, taking two in Arizona, but the pitching. Of the Mariners surprisingly over the last two games has just been outstanding. I'm not surprised because they have good pitchers. And they've always had good pitchers, good relievers, good starters. It's been like that for a long time with that organization. Paxton really found his groove on Friday night. They've been looking for that out of the left hander. Breaking ball low to Pilar. And then Yesterday it was just a continuation for Iwakuma who yeah he's been hot he's been hot mm -hmm. they're going to make a run they might be making the run right now yeah would you say they're out three they're and a half games three and a half out and wild card race ground ball is hit foul and it's because they're playing better baseball just over the last couple of weeks pitching yeah pitching King is Felix is yeah. back. Pilar line drive Cano over to first and a double play. 
through two no score we go to the third. has been one of the best left handers in the game not only in the American League. How about this best record in baseball for left handed pitchers Chris Sale 14 and 3 Jay Happ right behind him with 12 wins and then Cole Hamels and Clayton Kershaw not on that list. How about David Price. David Price has lost seven games this year. He only lost five all of last season. And uh, I'll tell you what I'll take Jay Happ and his contract as opposed to David Price's. At 210 million. Yes. Remember that last year, everybody yes. was going crazy. I think the Blue Jays made a wise investment. Price nine and seven with a four and a half ERA. Hap last year with Seattle, and the pitch to Zanino is low. Was four and six with a 4.64 ERA. 21 games, 20 starts. He was traded right at the deadline to Pittsburgh for Adrian Sampson. Sampson. Made his major league debut on June 18th. Just one start, 24 year old. Not on the big league roster right now for the Mariners. Pitch is low. But when he went to Pittsburgh, I mean, he turned it on 7 and 2 with a 185 ERA and 11 starts. This is In interesting. Half. Right here. Yeah. You see Tolia now to Lewitsky. John Wondering Gibbons, if something's yeah. wrong. Yeah, here comes Pete Walker. He, he backed off the mound like something was wrong. And this is what you hate to see. And now Pete Walker's going to head back into the dugout. Tolia back behind home plate to Lewitsky back at short. Count three and zero. Oh. And a four pitch walk to the leadoff batter Mike Zanino. You know that is something that we haven't seen from Jay Happ. One more time watch him. Look into the dugout look away like something happened to him physically. After that pitch. He backs off the mound Josh Tolley picked up on it. Troy Tulowitzki picked up on it. But he waved everybody off so let's see if he's OK. Double play depth through the middle got a double play. Back in the second after walking the leadoff batter Cruz. Leonis Martin is the batter and there is a strike. And we talked about the. Jake Smolinski line drive off of the left forearm. And his last outing a week ago. In Oakland swing and a miss by Martin that was in the bottom of the fifth inning. And of course. When you see that you go back and you think about May 7th of 2013. And Desmond Jennings yeah. on the line drive. Right? That one was a little bit different. That yeah. one hit him in the yeah. head and he hurt his knee on that one. Had a chance to talk to him after the game. Throw down to second. 
And a delayed steal by Zanino. And he is out. How about the play by Josh Tolley? One, picking up that short hop after that slider was in the dirt, and then alertly picking up that Zanino tried the delay steal from first to second base. And he threw a strike. Good play. Watch him pick the ball. And then to his knees quickly and throws a strike to get the runner. You wonder what Zanino was thinking if he thought quite possibly it was by Tolley. Well, he's a catcher, <laughs> so maybe he thought that he wasn't going to come up with that. No, he was. <laughs> he's being aggressive on the base pass. Martin looks at a pitch down low and away. Well, any way you slice it, Blue Jays will take it. After a leadoff walk, get rid of him. You can see there's some concern on John Gibbons' face. Pete Walker there. Line drive, base hit through the right side. Martin is aboard with a one out single. App going for a career best 13th victory today, and a conversation continues. Yeah. Something's up. You know, we're not privy to all the information, how players feel. You, you ask him, and Jay was saying after that game, yeah. he said, I feel fine. I, I'm, I'm sore, and I'm going to be sore for a couple of days after taking that line drive, but there's no permanent damage, you know, like a, like a broken bone or anything like that. He said, I just have to pitch through the pain. X-rays were negative. They put a compression sleeve on his left forearm. Went by the elbow. Luis Sardinas is the batter, hitting just 190. The number nine hitter for Scott Service here in the top of the third, scoreless. And the pitch is in. Yesterday Seattle matched a season high with 19 hits. They were 9 for 15 with runners in scoring position. And Hap has kept them at bay thus far. Outfield straight away. Hap falls behind in the count. Two and one. Keep a close eye on them. Martin with the lead over at first. And Hap will check on him, and that toss over to first base pulls Edwin off of the bag. Good play by Edwin right there to snatch that one out of the air. Blue Jays are thinking something's up here, yeah. a hit and run or something. They got the right combination. And there's a bunt. They were right. Edwin applies a tag, two away. Martine at second now. Super slow mo cam. Brought to you by Rogers 4K TV. Get closer to the action with four times the resolution of HD alone. Aoki with a runner in scoring position with two away. I mentioned yesterday how the Mariners were 9 for 15 with runners in scoring position. On Friday night, just 1 for 13. And they came away with that victory as Paxton silenced the bats of the Blue Jays. Aoki flew out to left field first time up. Martin with a lead at second and half to the plate, and the pitch misses. You can see how close to the yeah. plate he is. That looked like it was inside. It's been a very pesky hitter, slapping the ball all over the place. Now the outfield is very shallow. Very shallow, and they are swung over to the left. Aoki right on top of the plate. There's a strike. The runner at second base, Leonis Martin, can really run, and he's getting a nice secondary lead. So any ball into the outfield, they're, because they're shallow, I think they're going to have a shot at getting the runner at the plate. Count two and one. Hap taking his time as he has a runner at second. He's already matched his win total from 
2000 is not and nine his third year in the big leagues when he was with the Phillies. Ground ball jammed him. Nice play by Devin Travis. And that'll strand a runner at second base. We head to the home half of inning number three. Scoreless Jays and Mariners. At Rogers Center, the Blue Jays salute the Canadian Armed Forces, and today they salute Chief Petty Officer Second Class Rene Asselin. He's deployed numerous times during his 29 years of service, including both Bosnia and Afghanistan. Chief Petty Officer Second Class Rene Asselin, today's Sunday salute. And of course, we see Marco Estrada right in the middle of that, as always. Carrera. Hits this one into left field, tailing toward the line. Aoki plays it. And there's one away here. Bottom of the third, Travis and then Tolley. We're talking about the pitching of the Mariners in this series and as of late. And you know, one of the things Scott Service talked about after yesterday's win is just the confidence of his team. He said, guys are looser, they're feeling good about where they're at right now. He said, but it's all been driven by the starting pitcher. And he said, hopefully we'll get a good one here today from Wade Miley. It normally does, yeah. right? Yep. It all starts out on that mound. Plus you back it up with a pretty good bullpen. In the air to shallow right field, and Cano comes down with it. There's two outs. Here comes Tolley. Here is Jay Happ. This is during the break. Remember, he backed away from the mound after Mike Zanino was walked or during his at bat. And George checking in with him just to see if everything is okay. You can see him, he waved him off. But something happened there, but seems like he's going to be okay. So, two outs, and here is Josh Tolley. Getting the start in three consecutive games for the first time this season. And Miley deals low. There is speculation in the Seattle papers that this is a showcase for Wade Miley. And that there is some interest in the left hander. And that quite possibly the Texas Rangers, one of those teams, the other name mentioned was James Paxton. As you talked about, Tabby, this is a team they have depth and starting pitching as well as a bullpen. It's rare. They already dealt one pitcher to the Chicago Cubs. And Wade Miley's a veteran. He's been around. He's pitched in, you know, tight ball games in August and September. Former first round draft pick of the Arizona Diamondbacks back in 2008. It's in the infield. And Kyle Seeger's underneath it, and it's a 1 2 3 inning. 
Down in order and scoreless through three. Here comes the ultimate cleanup crew. Brought to you by Home Hardware's exclusive line of the ultimate hard hitting and tough on grime cleaning products. of super fans cheering on their Superman Kevin Pillar here at the Rogers Center today and from super fans to super camps and this summer the Blue Jays Baseball Academy will be hosting 14 Honda super camps across the country. You can learn techniques from former Blue Jays such as Roberto Alomar, Devon White, Lloyd Mosby, Jesse Barfield and Dwayne Ward. You can register now at BlueJays.com slash camps. Back now to Matt and Pat. Guys. Salt, Salt Devon White uh, at lunchtime today. He says he's in town. They're getting ready to go to Ottawa to start their super camps and then back here next week to throw out throw off another camp. Uh, they do such a great job yeah. with those things. The kids just love it and you get all kind of instruction. Fouled off to the right side. Ionetta Cano and Cruz. And it's always great for them of course to have a former big leaguer there. And they got plenty of them who know a lot about the game of baseball. Ionetta struck out back in the top of the first inning. And the count two and one. Ionetta in that lineup because he's had a lot of success against Jay Happ. Four for seven with a home run. Now how about just the Blue Jays at large? He's hitting 418, nine doubles, three homers, 14 runs driven in, and 21 career games against the Blue Jays. And right here at this ballpark, hitting 421. Breaking a ball in the dirt, and the count runs full. Yeah, a little surprised when I saw his name in the lineup hitting second yeah. this afternoon. So it's got to be good numbers. Went back and looked at the numbers and then added what you were just saying against the Blue Jays in general and in this ballpark. Third walk of the game for the lefty Hap. The checkered flag event is back. Celebrating over 50 years of racing heritage in every Honda. Now is a great time to get into the all new Civic. Third inning in a row that he has started the inning by walking a batter. He hasn't been hurt by that as of yet. Yeah, the double play and the caught stealing helped out the last couple of innings. Walks have not been a problem this year with Jay Happ. His season high in a game was four. That's it. Over the last four starts, Jay has only walked three batters. That hasn't been a problem. That's why I think something might have happened to him in that inning. And the four walks that was against Arizona back on June 22nd. 
pitched well enough. The team has won each of his last seven starts, so he's been pitching well enough. He's kept the team in the in the game, giving them a chance to win. He has won all of those but one of them. And that fastball pumping in on Cano. And runners at first and second. Josh Tolley back out to the mound to see how his starter is. It's a fastball. They wanted this one in, but not that far in, right on the hip of Robinson Cano. He is going to feel that one as he makes his way down to first base. And Hap doing a little groundskeeping himself right around where he plants that lead right foot. I don't think he's happy with, with the surface today where that leg is or excuse me where that foot is landing. Runners at first and second that fastball up and in and Cano is down at first base a walk and a hit batter and here's Nelson Cruz big numbers against Hap. And against lefties this season, hitting 313 with 12 home runs. Nobody out here in the top half of the fourth. Hap looks to second. And the pitch misses 2 0. That's a dangerous combination when you're facing Nelson Cruz with a couple of runners on base, and he's ahead of the count. But you mentioned the seven RBIs. Yesterday, it's the fourth time in his yeah. career that he has done that, driven in at least seven runs in a game. Third time against the Blue Jays. First did it against the Jays back in 2011 when he played with the Texas Rangers, and then he backed it up the next year in 2012. The most career seven RBI games, Alex Rodriguez with five, Cruz is second with four. Here's a 2 1 right at the knees. Perfectly placed. He's had that pitch here in the first three innings of that game. Cutting that fastball. When he throws that cutter, he, in his mind, he's telling himself slider, slider. What that does, that helps him to stay on top of the ball. He might go right back in there with that cutter. The 2 2. And that one bounced up to the plate. And the count now three balls two strikes nobody out here. And the Mariners fourth. Mariners one game above 500 on the road against the American League East. You think about the East and how tough it is Baltimore New York Toronto Boston of course. New York hasn't been as tough this year but this season they're 15 and six against the American League East. Hap taking some time. Got him. Down in the count. And Hap comes back and strikes out the dangerous Nelson Cruz. Boy, what a pitch. Right on the outside corner. Cruz can reach that pitch, but he doesn't reach this time. Jay comes up with his second strikeout of the afternoon. Ball what's right by him. He looked like he was looking for something off speed right there and crossed him up with the cutter. You can see the two trainers talking about what they are they are seeing from Jay Hap. It's Mike Frosted on the left, George Poulos on the right. They hold Lee fouls it off to the right side looking for that double play. He got one in the second. To end that inning. Can he get one here a walk. To Ionetta, And then a fastball that got away from him and it hit Cano. Lee 0 for 1 he flew out to left field back in the second. Get it on the ground. That's what you're thinking right now for Jay. Jay Happ. The 1 1. Stays away from him. 
And I think you have to stay away from him. He's got power the other way. Got 12 home runs this season. In just 195 at bats, he's been splitting time at first base with Adam Lynn. What a combination those two have yeah. been for the Mariners this year. Lynn with 15 home runs. Painted perfectly. It's been there all afternoon for him. Those right handed batters looking for the ball out over the plate. And he paints that fastball in the inside corner. He got Ionetta in the first inning on the similar type of pitch fastball inside. And he gets it right here. Good job by Josh Tolley to hold it there and frame it up. So after the walk and a hit batter, he comes back and he gets Cruz and then Lee here, Seeger. Grounded into a double play to end the top of the second inning. Ionetta with a lead at second. And that pitch misses low and away. Seeger in the month of July hitting 357 Tabby. His average up to 284 starting. On this day. He plays every day. Yeah. Played 161 games last year for Seattle. He's only missed three all season long this year. He's only missed 24 games since 2011. Totally now out to the mound to have a word with Jay Happ. Yeah, you can see Jay's doing all the talking right here. He called him out there. He said, I need to talk to you about what we want to do here with Kyle Seeger. Jay should know. They were teammates last year. How to pitch to him. 21 games a season to go with the Mariners before he was dealt to the Pirates. Seeger, despite being a left handed bat, has had success against Hap. Four for nine with a couple of home runs. And a strike. Tim Tibbins working the balls and strikes to Sherwater over at first. Crew chief Mike Everett at second and Jordan Baker down the third base line. Our crew here on this Sunday. And there's another strike. For one and two the count. So after that conversation, everything is in order. And it looked like he had an idea of what he wanted to do. Ionetta lead at second. Cano with a lead at first. Half checks on him. And the breaking ball down low and away. Count even at two and two. Mariners have won three in a row. They're trying to match their season best four game winning streak. They've come out on four occasions this season. As that one is fouled off. Got a piece of that from what what I've seen since they had that conversation. It looks like Jay went in there and told Josh hey I want to stay inside on Kyle Sear. I don't want the ball out over the plate. When he gets to two strikes he likes to flick that ball the other way. Looks like he's going to try and stay inside on him. He can drive the gaps. He's got 27 doubles this season. That's third in the American League behind David Ortiz and Manny Machado. Ortiz, what a season he's putting together in his final campaign. 35 doubles. Machado's got 30. And that one misses. They set up inside. Yeah. And they wanted to go back inside. But that cutter sweeped right off of the plate. Three balls, two strikes, and two outs. Ionetta. He'll be running at second. Cano, who was hit by a pitch, he'll be running at first. Half struck out Cruz, struck out Lee. The 3 2 fouled off and will do it again. He wanted that one inside again, and he still couldn't get it in there. 
Nice catch by a fan. Josh totally back out there one more time to Jay. Talk to Jay. This might be a hey. This is what I want to throw right here. Don't even put a sign down. Just in case Ionetta, the runner at second base, who is a catcher, might flash some location or flash the sign. And I'll just go back there, put your glove up, give me a target, and I'll hit it. The 3 2 in the air, foul ground. Barney's got it. A walk and then a hit batter. Half works out of the jam. We go now to the home half of the fourth. Tennis players touchdown in Canada. Milos Raonic faces the men in Toronto while Jeannie Bouchard takes on the women in her hometown of Montreal. The Rogers Cup begins tomorrow on Sportsnet. And of course, guys, Milos Raonic coming off that finals appearance at Wimbledon. And what a performance that was from him. And with the field and the Rogers Cup, this may be the year for Milos. And what a great event the Rogers Cup is as Barney. He is the batter then Donaldson and Encarnacion can the Blue Jays bats come alive here against Miley. Big hop. And Seeger. Gets out Barney at first base. You know we've talked about uh, Wade Miley and the problems that he's had over his last four or five starts. He said he made some adjustments in his last start against the Chicago White Sox. Gave up three runs pitching into the seventh inning against the White Sox in his last start. Said I slowed myself down to get in more of a ry rhythm. I said I'm staying on top of the rubber just a little bit longer. It says it helps me to stay behind the ball. It's been made all the difference for him. It's looked good today. He has. And there was a lot of talk that prior to his last start against the White Sox that he may in fact be sent down to Triple A Tacoma. Yeah. Sent down to Triple A or sent to the bullpen. But Scott Service was saying he thinks that he fits as a starter yeah. in, in the rotation. How he thinks, how his stuff works, how his mind works. He says he's better off staying in the rotation. And they needed that starter after they traded Mike Montgomery this week. Mm -hmm. This would have been Mike Montgomery's turn. Donaldson hitting 341 against left handers. And they'll check down the first base line. No, Donaldson did not go around. Flew out to deep center field in the bottom of the first inning. Bring on the rain, no doubt. As Miley brings it, and it's fouled right back. Donaldson with one hit in the series. Yesterday he was on board twice. Walks 66 and 67. He leads the American League in that category. 
tremendous season he's having at home. He loves it here at the Rogers Center hitting 326 with 12 homers and 38 runs driven in. I remember asking him right when he got traded to the Blue Jays the effects of hitting here would be. And he's like well I'm not sure I said do you know how the ball flies out of here. Such a better hitters ballpark than Oakland. So, so we'll see. Yeah we did didn't we. Yeah. <laughs> 40 bombs last year MVP. He's just a student and hitter. He understands it. He understands his swing. So passionate about it as well. Big hop for Sardinia at short and there's two down. This Blue Jays Rogers 4K broadcast is powered by the Samsung 4K SUHD TV. Donaldson 0 for 2. Great crowd here. Crowds have been spectacular all series long. As the Blue Jays <laughs> <laughs> lead the American League in attendance. Encarnacion drives this one deep to center field. Just saw the pair climb aboard. The pair was flapping his wings, asking for Edwin to do something special, and he just did. Home run number 27, RBI number 87, and that ball was drilled by Encarnacion. His first home run of this series. 87 RBIs. It's 1 0 Blue Jays. And here's Saunders. He has three homers in the series. And the pitch is up and in. All three of them, the opposite field. You mentioned Wade Miley's given up 17 home runs. This is number 18. Cutter, that's away, and Edwards stays right with it. And Saunders launches this one foul. He doesn't have to pull the ball to knock it out of the ballpark. Watch him stay back. On a line under the seats. Leonis Martin recognized that really early. Took a couple of steps out there in center field and said, I'm not catching that one. Blue Jays with a 1 0 lead here. Blue Jays had a 1 0 lead yesterday after. Pilar walked and scored but then Nelson Cruz put an end to that. And they're playing catch up the rest of. The day Saunders. Grounds out and that's going to do it here in the bottom of the fourth inning but not before Edwin Encarnacion hits a home run. Time now for a Blue Jay Central update. Here's Jamie and Zani in the Samsung broadcast studio.
24 as a member of the Toronto Blue Jays now third all time. You know what's impressive about that Carlos Delgado did his in 12 seasons Bautista nine and Carnacion nine and he Vernon Wells was 12 seasons with the Blue Jays and passed him tells you the kind of power numbers that he has put up for the Blue Jays now third all time in Blue Jay history Blue Jays lead one nothing half. We'll work against Zanino Martin and Sardinius bottom third of the order for Scott service top half of the fifth and Zanino gets underneath it Blue Jays have lost consecutive games at home for the first time since June 30th and July 1st of course at July 1st game the 19 inning game they lost to the Indians. You don't have to remind me. <laughs> I was here <laughs> six hours and 15 minutes worth. They haven't been swept at home by one team since Tampa. That's Back right. In May. Back. Middle of May. The 2 1, and the count now 2 and 2. And it's interesting. And Jay Hap talked about why he's been so successful this season compared to. Years pass, and he said, I'm not beating myself up as much as I used to in the past over poor performances. Well, he's got a three year contract. Good pitch. He's got a three year contract. He's got the security of that. He's been around. He's a veteran. He's been with other teams. He's pitched in some big ball games. He's also trusting his stuff a lot more this year. He says he's reading bats and understanding what guys are doing. At times, he'd sit out on that. Mound and think about the scouting report. He worked very slow, threw a lot of pitches early. Now he's trusting what he's seeing and, and just trusting his stuff. Martin looks at a breaking ball strike. Said he's just not dwelling on the negatives, taking things in stride. So important, but as you said, has a contract now, 33 years of age. Having success over the last seven games, six and zero with the 3.19 ERA. So great to see signed as a free agent back the end of November. And back in Toronto having a spectacular season. He's been one of the best left handers in the majors. You know look if you break down the game of baseball it's a game of failure isn't it. Yeah. You fail seven out of ten times as a hitter. Three hundred. You're a three hundred hitter. So you better learn. How to deal with. The losing or not pitching well. Edwin the backhanded play he'll go to the bag and Martin is out Edwin Encarnacion the home run and then a nice job over there at first base doing it with the bat and now he's going to do it with the leather watch Tim he's played first base now Blue Jays where they were in Arizona he had to play first and now he's played first base every game here picks it takes away a hit from Martin do it Edwin. Now using the glove to take care of some laundry and on that right knee, cleaning up some of the dirt. Sardinius, the batter here. But you're so right. You have to be able to handle. And I think that's what Jay's doing yeah. right now. He's able to forget about the bad ones and remember the good ones. It's almost like you have to fool yourself sometimes. You have to you have to stay confident. Because it's such a tough game to play. Yeah. It's a game of failure. Yeah. It's really hard to play, especially yeah. at this level. And there's a fine line, right? Yes. Yeah. You don't want to get too high. You don't want to get too low. And tell you what, if you can psych yourself out and tell yourself how great you are, <laughs> it's going to help you, I think, when you cross the lines. One, two, away. How many times in your career did you have to battle that from a Daily basis, hey. thousands. Yeah, every day, every day. Do you know what it's like to stay on deck and Roger Clemens pitching? You got to go up there and face him in front of 50,000 people. You know. Here's the two-two, and got him. A one-two-three inning.
chairs in the TD Comfort Zone, and today we welcome guests of the TD. And hey, never say staycation again with the number one rated travel rewards card in Canada. It's the WestJet RBC World Elite MasterCard. Visit rbc.com slash WestJet to apply today. And speaking of flying guys, a lot of red capes in the stands here today, and really nice to see that they awarded a meet and greet today with Kevin Pillar after the game. To Lewitsky, Pilar, Carrera, the batters here. To Lewitsky, a single back in the second. Getting ready for Kevin Pilar, <laughs> Superman. Kevin Pilar bobblehead day to Lewitsky in a breaking ball. Back in 2007, Troy Tulowitzki, as a rookie for the Colorado Rockies, hit 24 home runs. Well, yesterday, Trevor Story hit his 25th and 26th home runs, passing Tulo for the most ever by a National League rookie. Shortstop. Let's send it over to Jamie. Last night, 11 9. Minnesota 37 and 60 at the start of the day. Here's Pilar. Yeah, beating up on the Boston Red yep. Sox. Red Sox scored nine runs yesterday and still lost to Minnesota. Pilar walks this one into left field. Here you go. His first time up hit a line drive. I mean, absolutely scalded the ball. Right at the second baseman for a double play. This time he gets jammed just a little bit and muscles the ball into the outfield. Hitting 304 here at home. How to do something special on your day. Yep. Carrera the batter. He's 0 for 1. And Miley deals a strike. In at third, that's Seeger. Pilar over at first base. And there's strike two quickly now to Carrera. Travis on deck. And a swing and a miss. Civic, the 2016 North American Car of the Year. Two outs and a strike two. The batter, Travis, he's 0 for 1. You know, this is a good time to run right here, but Miley is very tough on delivering the pitch. He's very quick over to first base. He had five pickoffs last year, time for second most in the American League. It was also a career high for Wade Miley. He's got a very good pickoff move. If you are going to go, you might want to go on first movement. Foul off to the right side. Miley trying to string together two successful outings in a row. Although he lost that last one and heading down to first base, Travis, he's going to strike out. And he's able to get out of the inning. He strikes out the side. Pilar, though, did have a base hit. Four strikeouts now for Miley.
MLB.com at bat app. You can customize that bat to feature the Blue Jays and stay up to the moment at any moment with scores, news, live game video highlights, and much more. Download MLB.com at bat. It's the number one app for live baseball and really comes in handy on these sunny afternoons, especially in the summer, Matt. And go outside, and enjoy the weather, and check out the Jays at the same time. Absolutely a great weekend here in Toronto. Of course, this homestand continues. The Padres come to town tomorrow. And then after that, it's the Baltimore Orioles before the Blue Jays head down to Houston. Aoki, Ionetta, and Cano here to begin the top of the sixth. Aoki 0 for 2. And Hap on the way to the plate. And that one misses and a count of 1 and 1. Last time Hap worked beyond the sixth inning was back on July 3rd. That was against Cleveland. He left when it was 13 to 1, and the Jays won at 17 1. Worked seven innings, five hits, allowed just one run, 11 strikeouts. Didn't walk a batter. And now he wants a new baseball here on account of three and one. I'm happy with that one. Uh, tough to walk this guy. I mean, he's, he is a free swinger. He likes to hit his way on base. Trying to bunt his way on base there and the count now three balls and two strikes. For the Mariners, they're continuing a three team 11 day eight game road trip. After today, they'll head to Pittsburgh for two games and then take on the Cubs at Wrigley Field for three games. And they finished a homestand against Houston. They Lost two or three. Comebacker half handles it. And Aoki is out. And then they took two or three from the White Sox. Well, Jay Happ has been on a nice little roll since June the 6th. That was at Detroit. That was also the last time he lost a ball game. He's undefeated, an outstanding earn run average, and he's gotten some support. A lot of that has to do with that big game that you were talking about, the 17 run score, but he is. Held the opponents to a 260 batting average. He won in Colorado. He beat the Cleveland team. He beat Detroit. Came back to beat them. One at Philadelphia. He has just pitched some great ball games. He's just been filling up the strike zone, keeping the pressure on the, those hitters. Looking for number 13. Win number 13, which would be a career high this afternoon. Yeah, mentioned back in 2000 is not and nine his third year and. The big leagues for the Philadelphia Phillies, he won 12. He started 35 games that year, or appeared in 35 games that year. He started 23 games, and he had a 2.93 ERA. Called up today from AAA Buffalo, Ryan Tapera. He's in the bullpen right now. Called up when Drew Storm was let go today. Jay's thrown 90 pitches now. The Blue Jays are pretty consistent right around that 100 pitch limit. They will get that starter out of there. 84 pitches in his last out. He had three straight of 101 or more. Topping out at 109. That was on July 8th against Detroit. And Ionetta. Lifts this one high in the air, left center field going back with room. Pilar is there. Two outs. And Pete Walker on the phone. And here's Robinson Cano. Cano. 0 for 1 grounded out to end the top of the first inning hit by a pitch was stranded at first in the fourth. You know that discussion right there might have something to do with you know if he loses Robinson Cano here 
does he want Jay Happ to face Cruz and De Ho mm -hmm. Lee, the right handers, or is John Gibbons going to use to pair to get through the inning if he loses Robinson Cano here? There's Nelson Cruz. So it was probably, hey, hurry up and get yourself ready just in case Cano gets on. Happ third in the American League this season and wins. Looking for 13, has a 1 0 lead as it's fouled off to the left side. Count of one ball, one strike. He's done a good job in his career versus Robinson Cano. Five for 23 now. That's all Cano's been able to yeah. muster against Jay. That one just misses away. And the count two and one. At 12 and three. What a year. Back in 2009, he was 12 and four in those 23 starts. And 35 appearances. And the count now evens at two and two to number 22. Well, that's a good pitch right there. It's hard. He can cut the ball and he could also throw a breaking ball. But that time, a little bit harder. He tells himself, get out in front. Think slider when I'm throwing that cutter, and that helps him to stay on top and really. Cut that ball away. Two balls, two strikes with two outs here in the top of the sixth. A solo home run back in the fourth inning by Edwin Encarnacion, and the Jays lead by one. Only one hit. For the Mariners, that was by Martin back in the third. And the count runs full, three balls and two strikes to Cano. Cruz waits. Ball four. Fourth walk of the game for Hap. And Tolley comes out, and here comes Pete Walker, the pitching coach for the Blue Jays. He's going to get a little scouting report right now to see how Jay Happ feels. You've got one of the toughest hitters in Jay's career coming up, and Nelson Cruz, who had a big day yesterday. Gibby wants to make sure now if Tapera is ready, just in case he wants to go to his bullpen. Deho Lee, right handed hitter after Cruz, Seeger, left handed hitter. And Brett Cecil getting up, the left hander. Tapera just called up from Buffalo, and the right hander, and Cecil, the lefty, getting ready. Hap. And that pitch misses down and in to Cruz. You know, Brett Cecil getting up right there. That's really interesting. If he can get ready quick enough. You got Lee on deck. If they brought in the right hander. Yeah, would that mean Adam Lynn? Yeah, but but you have to bring in the right hander against Cruz yeah. before the set bat is over. Right? He has to face one batter before you can make the pitching change. Cruz fouls it off to the right side. So if you fall behind 3 0, you bring in the right hand to face him. They pinch hit, then you lose him. You yeah. pinch hit him. You bring in Cecil to face Lynn. Lots to think about. He can make it all. Disappear by getting Cruz right here. Absolutely struck him out back in the fourth. Ahead in the count here. Gets him. <laughs> Enough said. Six strikeouts through six, and the Blue Jays lead one nothing.
Blue Jays on Sportsnet. Presented by Honda, the checkered flag event is back, celebrating over 50 years of racing heritage in every Honda. There you go. Pets are being named. Now after Kevin Pillar. <laughs> Tolly, Barney, Donaldson. Did they name him Kevin? Or did they name it Pillar? No. Or Superman. Both. No. First name, last name, Kevin Pillar. That's Sherpa? <laughs> yes. <laughs> wow. Now that's popular. I was talking to him the other day. I said, Kevin, you finally arrived. You got a bobblehead named after you. I said, I guess. Not on the Wheaties box anymore. <laughs> That's old school, isn't it? Yes. You know you've arrived when you're on the Wheaties box. Now it's a bobblehead day. Three and zero, the count to Tolly, and a strike is called. Now it's maybe you've arrived if your gerbil's named after you. Yeah, Kevin Pilar. <laughs> and strike two. The candy bar though is still left for just a few right. Well. Those are like Hall of Fame type players yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that's, sure. that's as few and far between. Yeah. The candy bar. Reggie the candy bar. bar. And the O. Henry, Henry bar, bar right. Yeah. Or Henry Rodriguez in Montreal. Tolly in the air to left field. Curving into foul territory and out of play. This copyrighted telecast is presented by Authority of Rogers Blue Jays Baseball Partnership. It may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of Rogers Blue Jays Baseball Partnership. Ed Wing. And the Jays lead 1-0. Here in the bottom of the six. Tolley shoots it in the gap. Right center field. Tolley on his way to second. And a stand up double to begin the sixth. You know, after it got to three and two, Josh could sell out on a fastball. Look for a fastball. Get it started early. Make sure you connect out in front. That's exactly what he did against Wade Miley, the lefty. That's a four seamer. Straight fastball right down Broadway, and he smokes his ball into the gap. That's an um, extension as he drills that ball into the gap for extra bases. This will be interesting now. Darwin Barney's got to move that runner. Totally bearing down on Louis Rivera on the signs. Seeger in at third and Lee coming in at first. Really tight. I don't yeah. know if I would punt here. I, I don't know. show it. I, you got a below average runner at second base. You might be bunting right into an out. He's already in scoring position. You've got the yeah. lead. You got a right handed batter up against a left handed pitcher. Let him go ahead and swing away. Maybe he could knock him in. And he tries to go the other way. What Josh Tolley is going to have to be wary of if he swings away and hits a ground ball to the right side. You got to bust it. Because Robinson Cano has shortened up at second base. If there's a ground ball there, he's got enough arm that he can still go to third base. On the ground to first, a throw to third, not in time. Outside part of the bag, and a sweeping tag. And with the left hand in there, Tolly is safe. You know what you have to do if you're the runner at second base, you got to get a big secondary lead and then don't take anything for granted. Even the ground ball of the Deho Lee, the first baseman, he's going to come across the diamond. It's close. The Mariners are looking at it. And we will see. Here's the play one more time the dive to the outside part of the bag. I don't know. It looks like he tagged him on top of his wrist, but the fingers were in there. This should be a good play here. You can see he takes one more look over his shoulder to see if they're coming over to third base. 
And Lou Rivera blocked us. And the third base umpire is right there. The sweeping tag and the fingertips are in, and he is safe. Jordan Baker was right there. This replay review powered by Samsung. So a good piece of hitting by Darwin Barney. Good piece of base running by Josh Tolley. Watch him go to the outside part of the bag. Right there. He's safe. And he never came off the bag. Jordan Baker was right on top of. Yes he was that play got it right. We have the ability to slow it down and stop it if we want to and Josh Tolley's he's safe. Not enough there to overturn that call. The headsets are off. Safe. at the corners here in the bottom of the sixth inning with nobody out Donaldson waits in the batter's box he's 0 for 2 Miley to the plate and the fastball is high couldn't have set up any better for the Blue Jays here in the sixth inning double Mariners cannot get the out over at third base first and third nobody out your best hitters coming up. Double play depth through the middle. Sardinius and Cano. Marnie being held on by Lee over at first. Tolly at third and a breaking ball in the dirt. Two and one now the count to the AL MVP. Donaldson with a double on Friday night. His only hit in this series. Ground ball. Right to second and on to first base. Totally scores or two outs. Six four three double play. Mariners trade a couple of outs for a run. 2 nothing now Blue Jays. Here's Edwin. Well, initially, Sardine just the shortstop might come home on that ground ball because it wasn't hit very hard. But the Blue Jays pick up an insurance run. Last time up, Edwin made a solo home run, his 27th this season, his 224th. Of his Blue Jay career, third all time behind Delgado and Bautista. Edwin looks at that one. Outfield deep as you would expect. Center fielder Martin shading him toward the gap in left center field and working him away, and a strike is there. Yeah, pitching away from his power. Yeah. Did that last time, and he homered to right. And that's ball four. Send it over to Jamie Campbell. Jamie. <laughs> Yankees lead to nothing through five. Bottom of the fourth Minnesota and Boston tied at three. Saunders looks at a pitch. He's 0 for 2. Struck out, grounded out. Shift is on. Seeger over in the shortstop hole. Well, he has such a good eye, doesn't he? You've had a chance to watch him now for a week or so. He just 
will not offer at those pitches off the plate. He's in a good fastball count again. Tried to do something with that one. There's some respect. 2 0 slider. Michaels homered three times in this yeah. series against this former team. And against a t tough lefty in Paxton on Friday night. And all three of them have been opposite field. The other way. Yeah. Yeah, he doesn't have to pull it to knock it out of here. Showing that kind of pop. Saunders wanted to stay up there. <laughs> yeah. You know, what? He's, this, this at bat, I'm working the count. He thought it was a strike. <laughs> Wade Miley thought it was a strike. 3 1 breaking ball again. Home plate umpire Tim Timmons said, no, that ball was up. And now the home plate umpire looking out on to the mound. Runners at first and second, and Tulowitzki is the hitter. And the fifth pitch was in the zone, upper and I, part of the zone. And I think Michael wanted to yeah. hit. I thought he thought it was a strike. Now he'll go to work against Tulowitzki. Miley, the 29 year old, picked up in an offseason trade with the Red Sox. His fifth start since being reinstated from the 15 day DL. 0 and 4 since returning from the D.O. And this one driven into left field and nearly misplayed by Aoki. But he was able to break backwards at the last minute and make a play on it. Here comes Brett Cecil. Blue Jays lead it 2 nothing. To work did walk four struck out six and now it's up to the bullpen so he can earn his career best 13th game. How about that one hit the fewest hits he has allowed in a start this year that was that third inning single to Leonis Martin. He now will give way to Brett Cecil. Brett pitched in this series already faced two batters two lefties got them out. There are the numbers for Cecil in 25 games this year. Still averaging eight strikeouts per nine innings. He will face Lee, Seeger, and Zanino. Lee has hit six of his 12 home runs against left handed pitching this season. Lee is 0 for 2. And that one fouled right back. Blue Jays have used the bullpen, excuse me. Matty a lot in this yeah. series. 
Schultz has thrown two days in a row. Be a genius thrown two days in a row. So you got to figure that they might be down today. Yeah. Jesse Chavez just two thirds of an inning yesterday. So it looks like at least for today Cecil in the seventh really in the eighth or soon in the ninth. That's going to be the play. And five. Pitchers used yesterday after R.A. Dickey worked his shortest stint as a member of the Toronto Blue Jays, just three plus innings, seven hits, and six runs as Dejo Lee goes down swinging. Well, that's what you like to see if your Brett Cecil come in, throw strikes, get him out of there quickly, three pitches, and finishes them off. High fastball upstairs. Pick up the strikeout. Seeger is a left handed bat. He is 0 for 2. And the first pitch is strike. Last time that Grilly and Osuna worked, that was on Tuesday in Arizona. Blue Jays won that game 5 1. Problems that I have seen this year from Brett Cecil. Breaking ball at times hasn't been consistently sharp. Sometimes it's really good, sometimes it just rolls up there. 1 1 fouled off ahead in the count here. And his ability to throw strikes with it hasn't been very consistent last year. Had an outstanding year. Yep. He was dropping that curveball in there anytime he wanted to. Bam. Against lefties, against righties, and then going upstairs with the fastball. Occasional change up. Two and two now the count. That is Tom Wilhelmson. Looks like he's going to enter the ball game here, warming up to get ready for the bottom of the seventh. Wow. That pitch misses low. Nope. Nothing wrong with his curveball today. It's sharp. That one looked like it caught the plate. Yep. Except that Josh Tolley was set up on the outside part of the plate, had to reach back for it. And that's going to be a one out walk. And let's send it over to Jamie. Yeah, how about that one for Chris Sale? He's been suspended. Five games. Did not like the collared baseball uniforms that they were supposed to wear and decided to uh, tailor them a little <laughs> bit, cut them up a little bit. And, uh, but when initially that was announced that he was scratched, of course, speculation was ran yeah. that he was traded. But after that, who knows? Maybe he doesn't want to be there, right? He had a meeting today with Rick yeah. Hahn, the general manager, and that was not part of the discussion. Him being traded, and he did not say that he wanted to get traded. He clearly just didn't want to wear that uniform. Zanino is the batter. And Grilly, the right hander, is up for the Blue Jays. And this is just one of those situations where maybe you extend. Really, you extend Osuna a little bit as that one is a strike. There's the good curveball right there. He can throw it at any time to righties and to lefties when he's ahead of the count, when he's behind in the count. If he gets that kind of break, he's going to have a good second half to his season. Look at that thing spinning and it just locks up Zanino. With Cecil in the game, that leaves Adam Lind on the bench. Yeah. I mean, that's the guy that I, I worry about. He's had two walk off home runs this season, five in his career. There's a strike to Martin. Blue Jays need Brent Cecil to come through for him. Yes, they do. 
He and Morales, Franklin Morales, played pitch yesterday a couple yeah. of innings, just gave up one hit. Then you got two dynamic left-handers who can do this, yeah. strike you out. What do you see with that breaking ball last year compared to this year? Just inconsistent this year. Yeah. Sometimes it rolls up there, sometimes it's sharp. Today he's got a good one. Yeah. You, you can see that. He's got a sharp breaker. And then his ability to throw it where he wants to has just been off a little bit this year. Seagull over at first, the 2 Outside. And the count one and two. Top of the seventh inning. Jays lead it 2 0. Trying to avoid a sweep. Ground ball, Edwin handles it. We go to the bottom of the seventh inning. Blue Jays lead it 2 0. Cecil gets the job done. Wade Miley is done and Tom Wilhelmson comes in the right hander. And he's going to face Kevin Pilar, Carrera and Travis. And what a great day for Kevin Pilar. Bobblehead day look at this I got here early this morning and the lines were already there all queued up. And then he received the Wilson Defensive Player of the Year award prior to the start of this game. And this is his father, Mike Pilar, throwing out the first pitch to his son, Kevin. And then his brother, Michael Pilar, also threw out a ceremonial first pitch. What a great day for Kevin Pilar. And he's one for two. And the Jays lead to nothing. Yeah, he's got a single in his last at bat. That uh, award that he won recognizes him as the best center fielder in all of baseball. He did not win the gold glove. That went to Kevin Kiermeyer. But the the Wilson Award is presented to one player from each position, regardless of the league, and he won it. With a fielding percentage of 996, 404 putouts. He beat out Mike Trout and Kevin Kiermeyer for that award. So, congratulations to Kevin. That should be some nice hardware for the trophy mantle. He's one for three. Yeah, shaking his head there. But we've seen him so many times make just dazzling plays out there. In center field. Here's his father watching, Mike. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Nothing you can do about it. Pops. That is a hopeless feeling, isn't it? <laughs> when you're watching your kid play, I mean, you're hoping for the best. Kevin hit that ball hard, but right at the first baseman, that had double written all over it. It's like a roller coaster ride on every pitch. The best thing you can do, just sit on your hands, him. Yeah. Right? Control what you can control. Just sit back and enjoy it. Hey, it's tough. When I went and watched my sons play sports, I wanted to go out there and 
be there right with them and help them through. You did it at a yeah. I mean, you're an ex big leaguer. It's a different thing, right? I mean, no. You, it, 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 it's well, it's different. Tough. No, I know that, but you can actually go out there and do it, right? There's a lot of folks that can't do it. Well, they think they can do it. Right? Yeah, well, or have done it, or haven't done it, but it's really tough. I mean, you're pulling for your kid. And you don't want to show too much emotion. No. His dad did the right thing right there, right? Yeah. Just look up to the sky. Two outs. And it's so great for the Pilar family. And his brother Michael and that sibling rivalry. I saw him in the hotel last night, Kevin. He was going to trying to get to dinner, the hotel right here at the ballpark. He was trying to get to dinner with his family. And the people were all over pictures and autographs. And Kevin sat there and signed every one of them. It's the kind of guy he is. Great teammate. Great player. And a great person as that pitch is inside. Devin Travis 0 for 2. That's true right there. That statement. They yeah. love him. You know, the way he plays the outfield. You know, he'll run through anything. And there's a strike. And the count three and one. Wilhelmson coming on for Wade Miley. You know, Miley, you know, two solid performances in a row for the left hander. Didn't win the last one. And you know, this one right here, he's down 2 0 to the Blue Jays. That should keep him in the rotation. Yeah. Talk about maybe taking him out of the rotation. He pitched well enough to stay in. On the outside corner. One, two, three, bottom of the seventh inning. Through seven, it's two nothing. Blue Jays, we go to the eighth. Seth Rollins, Roman Reigns, Dean Ambrose, they will all be clashing for the opportunity to become champion. It's WWE Battleground tonight on the WWE Network. Visit WWE.com slash Canada for more details. New pitcher now for the Blue Jays and the veteran Jason Grilly comes in. Jason's taking over that eighth inning for the Blue Jays. He last worked five days ago in that game in Arizona where he did pick up a hole there. His numbers combined with Atlanta and Toronto, 4 and 3, 386 earned run average. His ERA was five and a half with Atlanta, with the Blue Jays, two and a half. And he has cemented himself in that eighth inning role for the Blue Jays. Sean O'Malley is pinch hitting for Sardinius here. 
And with the right hander in O'Malley yesterday didn't hit the ball hard didn't have to he was three for five. And now the home plate umpire Tim Timmons pulls the mask up and has a few words for the dugout of the Mariners. Every Mariner yesterday in the starting lineup had a base hit. I mean they have 19 19 tied a season high and O'Malley didn't leave the infield and he had three. Yeah, it was that kind of day. He could really run. Yeah. So I think the whole infield should shorten up. Barney in at third, even with a bag at first. And Grilly pumps it in there at 94. Right hander comes set and the one two just off the outside. Just trying to knock the bat out of his hand. Outfield is shallow. They're pulled around to the left, not anticipating O'Malley to get around on Greeley's fastball. You can see he's choked up just a little bit now since he's gotten to two strikes. Slap foul. Great pickup for the Blue Jays. Scott Service. And the Mariners. They've won three in a row. They're three and a half back in that wild card race, three games above 500. They have an off day tomorrow, then they'll take on Pittsburgh and then head to. Chicago and they'll see the Cubs there and that pitch misses up. He had him set up for that yeah. one. If it was down just a little bit he would have been fine. Everything been away away away. He had him set up with that inside fastball. But he just missed. Aoki awaits on deck. And then Ionetta, he's in the hole. O'Malley the pinch hitter for Sardinas and he fouls it off to stay alive. Blue Jays lead 2 nothing on a home run off the bat of Edwin Encarnacion and a double play ball off the bat of Donaldson. This one hit in the air to center. Pilar going back and easily makes the grab. Home hardware and building center locations. Proud partners of the Toronto Blue Jays. Homeowners helping homeowners with expert advice. One down here in the top of the eighth inning. And with some cloud cover, a very comfortable day here at Rogers Center. 26 degrees. That first pitch. Aoki is the same type of hitter we just saw in O'Malley. Just keep pumping that fastball. Knocked the bat right out of his hands. He kept the fastball up, saying, I don't think you can get around on it. He hit a lazy fly ball to center yeah. field. Just keep pumping it in there. He's a smart guy. He's been around a long time. He understands it. He's only given up two hits in his last seven outings. Yeah. That's how good he has been for the Blue Jays. And he understands who he is mm -hmm. as a pitcher. Knows what he can and can't do. Rides that one up and in, and Aoki can't, couldn't handle it. Even if he did, even if he did hit it, where is he going to hit it? Fastball up and in. How about this swing? Just blew it right by him. Veteran right-hander. Had some great years in Pittsburgh when he was the closer. And what a play by Darwin Barney at third. Hasn't made an error over there. 
13th start of the year at third base. So Josh Donaldson can get off his feet and DH. Uh, he looks like a gold glover. You want a gold glove as a second baseman with the Cubs. How about this reaction? Fastball up and away. You got to figure he's going to just slap the ball the other way. He's anticipating it and takes away extra bases from Ioki. And Jason really loves it. Said I had him played just right. Barney. His 13th start at third hasn't committed an error. Great play there. Seth Smith, the pinch hitter here for Ionetta. Left handed bat. Ionetta was 0 for 2. With a walk. And Smith fouls that one back. Blue Jays lead 2 0. Grilly, the right hander. Has his family in from Pittsburgh. Just outside and the count of two and one. A little something off of that yeah. one. He knows what he's doing out there. Yeah. It's fun to watch guys like this. Like Jason. He, he understands the game, what he can and can't do. Smith is a very good fastball hitter. And that one up and in. 93 miles an hour. And bullpen for the Mariners. Joaquin Benoit now up. It's like he's going to get the bottom of the inning. Three balls and a strike. And out of play. Zuna is up and a closer for the Blue Jays. Three balls, two strikes, two away. Smith, the pinch hitter, stays alive by fouling it back. Jason just reaching back and throwing it as hard as he can for one inning. There's Pete Walker right there getting ready. If they lose Smith and Cano gets on, yeah. they might want Osuna to face Cruz. I think that's what they're talking about right there. Fresh arm against the power hitter. And that's where you're at with the Blue Jays' bullpen, right? Gilly may be extended a little bit. Osuna. Don't need him. Gilly strikes him out. Looking. Time for a Blue Jays Central update. Here's Jamie and Johnny in the Samsung Broadcast Studio.
Padres and the Baltimore Orioles. And on the road, Astros and the Royals. Yeah, Padres here tomorrow. Three game series, another off day on the 28th, and then back into the American League East with the Orioles. And then a very tough road trip for the Blue Jays. Four down in Houston, might be the hottest team in baseball right now, and then three more into Kansas City to take on the Royals, then back home against Tampa and Houston. But first, this game right here, Joaquin Benoit. The veteran will come in to pitch the bottom of the eighth inning. He's one and one with a 540 earned run average. He's averaging 10 strikeouts per nine innings with his fastball slider and outstanding split. This is where the Blue Jays scored that add on run in the sixth inning. If you remember, Josh Toley led off that inning with the double. Sean O'Malley will stay in the ball game at shortstop. Martin. And there's one away. And totally one for three. This is in the dugout. <laughs> Look at Grilly saying, what a catch. <laughs> what a scouting report. <laughs> I'm going to throw him a fastball away. You're going to be standing right there, and I'm going to make you look good. What a play. Barney 0 for 3. But a great play over there at third and the pitch misses down low and away. I mentioned at the start of the game Hall of Fame Sunday of course Ken Griffey Jr. inducted into the Hall of Fame today in Cooperstown New York along with Mike Piazza. Some other Mariners certainly Edgar Martinez designated hitter should be there. They they have a contingency that well he's there today yeah. a contingency Rick Riz the radio guy is there he's been there gate one for for Griffey Rick Griffin the longtime trainer of the Seattle Mariners he's there and Edgar who was their hitting coach has been here the last couple of days headed to Cooperstown because he wanted to be there for his guy Ken Griffey Jr. and supposedly what we heard he was Putting in his, a plug for Edgar yeah. to get into the Hall of Fame, and he should. I look forward to going home and to watching both of those speeches. Ken Griffey Jr. was the first overall selection in 1987. He played for the San Bernardino Spirits in the Cal League. You know, he's the highest drafted player ever elected in the Hall of Fame. He's a 1 1, isn't he? 1 1. First yeah. overall, 1987. Mm -hmm. No other number one overall pick. So what are you saying? That's overrated. <laughs> one ones if they're overrated. Well, I get it. Here's Barney. High in the air. Who wants it? And the third baseman Seeger handles it, and they're two away here in the eight. I've got a trivia question for yes. you. And you're very good at this, by the way. Counting Griffey and Piazza. Yes. How many total Hall of Famers are there now? Players, executives, managers, and umpires. <laughs> That's a great question. And so many folks right now there. On their devices trying to get that answer. Here's Donaldson. I'll give it to you. You know, wait, let me. <laughs> give me a ballpark yeah, figure. Yeah, well, that's what give I Give me a ballpark you know, figure. 300 and. 312. Wow, you're good. <laughs> I had the 300 part. <laughs> yeah, you got the 300. There's 12, 12 guys out there that I want to <laughs> apologize to. I didn't uh, get you. 312, the number of Hall of Famers elected by veterans. Committee, all that, or total number of Hall of Famers, players, executive, managers, umpires, including Griffey and Piazza. Select group, to say the least. One ball, two strikes. Fair. Donaldson was the batter back in the sixth inning, grounding into a double play. I totally scored on. There have been some other players who have played for Seattle that have gone into the Hall of Fame not as Seattle players. Randy Johnson, one of them. Goose Gossage played for Seattle. He's in the Hall of Fame, but not without the Mariner hat. Ricky Henderson and Gaylord Perry, they each played for 
the Mariners they are in the Hall of Fame but not as a Seattle Mariner. Dick Williams also who managed and Pat Gillick. Pat Gillick went in with the Blue Jays. And Dick Williams was a manager with the Mariners is in the Hall of Fame. Those are the players and executives and managers associated with the organization but Griffey is the first player who will go in with the cap. Ground ball O'Malley over to first base and it's a one two three bottom of the eighth. Drive of the game brought to you by the all new Civic the 2016 North American Car of the Year. Fourth inning, two outs. Edwin Encarnacion steps to the plate and belts his 27th home run deep into the seats in right center field. That is all the runs the Blue Jays have needed so far today. That's our drive of the game. Encarnacion, he has been on some kind of home run tear with that drive. Edwin gets set for the ninth inning and we'll have a new pitcher Roberto Osuna for the 43rd time this year he's 19 for 21 and save opportunities right he's hitting just a buck 53 against him he's only walked nine batters all year long what a season he is having following up that great rookie campaign he had Carrera moves over to left Junior Lake is now at right field. And Osuna to the plate. It's going to be Cano, Cruz, and Lee. The heart of the order now. It could be Adam Lind, and it appears that Adam Lind is in the hole. He's got a batting helmet on, holding a bat. He will hit for Deho Lee. One and one the count. There's just not a lot of at bats. There's Adam Lind. Looks like he's going to be hitting. It's not a lot of at bats, not a lot of history of the Mariners versus Roberto Osuna. Cano has faced him one time, 0 for 0. In the air, left center field, and moving over is Carrera, and he's got it. One away here in the top of the ninth inning, and we have the Indians and the Orioles. Coming up at the conclusion of this one that game is in the top of the seventh right now with the Orioles leading 3 2. Baltimore 56 and 40 Cleveland 56 and 40. Boston by the way pulling away from Minnesota they lead 8 3. And it's in the middle of the sixth. And the Yankees 5 nothing over the Giants Giants finally picking up their first win. Since the All Star break yesterday, as that pitch straightens up Nelson Cruz, and he's been silent today, and they want to keep it that way. He's 0 for 2. Walking a couple of strikeouts. Jay Happ pitched him tough. 
two big strikeouts with runners on base in the fourth and the sixth inning. Second year in Seattle, four time All Star hits this one in the air. Here comes Junior Lake moving over toward the line. There's two away. Adam Lynn makes his way to the batter's box. He's going to pinch hit for Deho Lee. The former Blue Jay. 235, 15 home runs, 43 RBIs. And this is his first look at Roberto Osuna. He's probably going to be looking for a first pitch fastball. That pitch misses down and away. Blue Jays trying to earn their 55th win of the season, their 28th year at home, and pick up their first win of this nine game homestand. They have the Padres tomorrow coming to town, and then Baltimore. Roberto comes set. Here's the offering, and it's low. A little change up right there from Roberto. How about that? His fastball still his best pitch. The 2 1, and it's fouled off. The Padres are in Washington taking on the Nationals. They're in the bottom of the fifth inning there. And they trail by one five four. Two balls, two strikes, two outs, and a two nothing lead. And the young right-handed closer looks in for the signs. Going against a former Blue Jay, Adam Lynn, the pinch hitter. Well, it reaches back for a little something extra, huh? Ninety-seven. He's talking about his rookie season. Osuna. Roberto had 20 saves last year. Hunting for number 20 right here. If he can get Adam Lynn, it will be his 20th of the season. And to end the three game win streak of the Mariners. Got him! Mm -hmm. Grilly, Osuna, and Jay Happ. A career best 13th win. He is now 13 and 3. And the home run by Encarnacion that we showed as the drive of the game was all the runs the Blue Jays needed today because they got outstanding pitching to stop that losing streak. Half for six. Cecil Grilly and then Osuna to finish it off. They gave up one hit today. As the Blue Jays shut out an opponent for the sixth time and they stopped that losing streak. Blue Jays win it 2 0. Time now for Blue Jays Central. Tomorrow it's the Padres. So Zuna gets a save. Here's Jamie and Zoni.